The sun has yet to rise over the vineyard of St. Madeleine's Abbey in La Bourou in the southeast of France. The monks have been up praying since 3.30 a.m. But here, time takes on a different meaning. Daily life in the vineyard is meant to transform you, to enchant you. It teaches you to love silence and solitude and hard work well done, while delighting you with the beauty of the cosmos. De la beauté du cosmos. As the sun rises, it blankets the monastery and the vineyard in a warm light, signaling a new day and a new beginning. The wine is a, the, the proof that God uh, wants us to be happy, and the sun rising in the mountain is the same. It's harvest season, and so the work begins for these Benedictine monks. Throughout the day, the monks will work in the vineyard, picking the best grapes from the vines in order to produce a heavenly wine they call Via Caritatis, Latin for True Charity. Father Charles is the Father Abbot and has been in charge of the monastery for almost 18 years. Tell me a bit about the monastery and its history. The monastery was founded in 1970 by Dom Gerard Calvet, a monk from the Abbey of Tournai. Then some young people joined him and now there are almost a hundred of us here with three monasteries. The monks rarely let cameras inside the gates of the monastery. They live a life of prayer and silence, praying seven times a day starting at 3.30 a.m. But as well as giving glory to God through prayer and song, they also do it through work and labor. Since we cultivate the land, we are using it to get the very best out of it in order to make a product that is good. And of course, everything that is good glorifies God. Here, everything that we do with our voices and with our hands serves to glorify and praise the Lord. The story of monastic life here in La Bourou and the wine they produce is incredible and goes back over 700 years. And close by to the abbey are the ruins of another monastery and the original vineyard for the papacy. This is incredible. So this is where we believe was the site of the first ever papal vineyard back in the 14th century. Exactly. This was the first papal vineyard that was planted uh, even before Chateauneuf du Pape, which is a very famous uh, vineyard here in France that was planted by the popes of Avignon, but it was planted after this first vineyard. And so this is the link from the papacy to the work that is done in the monastery today. Exactly, because the monks was, uh, were at that time, this was a monastery, uh, a Benedictine monastery, and the monks uh, uh, gave this monastery to the Pope so he can make of this monastery his papal uh, palace. palace. And the monks uh, left to settle down in another monastery that was called at that time uh, Saint Madeleine and 600 years after, they came back in the region and rebuilt the St. Madeleine Abbey. And now wine is flowing from this vineyard once again, thanks to these monks and sisters who work at a separate monastery close by. Father Michael, a priest from Virginia in the United States, first joined the monastery in 1988. Do you remember what it was like the first day you arrived here at the gates of the monastery? I got here on September 29th, the Feast of St. Michael, for the 10 o'clock Mass, and I, I went down the, the stairway to the crypt and just in time for the, for the office. So as well as the prayer life, the monastic life, you have your wine manufacturing life. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're running a vineyard here, you're running a business. What's your involvement in that? So I've worked outside here, actually, for 30 years. I've always uh, been a kind of a farmer in my blood. That's just my uh, genetic makeup from my grandmother who came from Switzerland. The monks of St. Madeleine's are no strangers to hard work and manual labor, as it's part of the Benedictine charism. Why is it important 
for the monks here in the monastery to be out working the land. Manual work is really important because it's an extraordinary opportunity to get back to reality, to get back in touch with reality and not just to stay in ideas, thoughts or our imagination, but to be really confronted with reality, which allows us to be realistic and to be humble enough. And this allows us to cultivate many virtues, patience, discipline, effort, and they are all virtues we need for the spiritual life. The monks' wine business turned out to be a true blessing for local wine growers at a time when it was becoming increasingly difficult for them to earn a living. Living close by, Guillaume is a local wine grower who sells his grapes to the monks and sisters. So beautiful. This is all yours? Yes. Wow, this is so spectacular. What a view. Here we have a Grenache vineyard. We have several grape varieties. To name them, we have Syrah, Grenache, Marcelin, Merlot. We have a lot. The collaboration with the monks is a partnership. We work together. We need each other. It's very enriching to have the two entities, monk and classic cooperators like us, the wine growers. It brings a richness and added value for our wine. Back inside the monastery, Father Odon and Gabriel Tessier, the director of development, are testing the quality of the various grapes and will only send the very best to be turned into wine. All these uh, indicators will uh, let us know if we have to harvest now or tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. And we have to be very accurate on the day we, we choose to make the harvest. The most important is a good fruit with a, a perfect maturity. And then we, we can have a very fine wine. The grapes are then transported to a local winery, where the monks conduct some final tests before handing it over to award-winning vintner Daniel, who oversees the maturing process and final product. You have the cork taken off the top of the barrel. Yeah. You normally come in and you, you taste it to see how the aging process is going? Exactly, so you have to taste every now and then and also feel the barrels. Yeah. What, a, what a difficult job you have. <laughs> <laughs> My job as a winemaker is kind of easy because they bring me very nice fruit quality. So I just need to, you know, preserve that quality from the beginning to the end. And that's what you get at the end. The monk's deep spirituality is intertwined in every part of the winemaking process. They want those who consume it to realize the goodness of God and how God can be praised via caritatis, through charity. So the tank in the winery was blessed by you. Yes. From which all the wine that you send yes, out yes, will go through. Yes, yes. The intention for this blessing is that uh, the, this wine, these wines could, um, could reveal the, the goodness of God to the people we drink the, them. Father, Sante. Sante. And for the monks themselves, they want to continue producing their wine, humbly and quietly, hidden away here in the southeast of France. They do not even want to give their full names for these interviews. They say all glory should go to God, not to them. Jesus was totally ignored. He was a great priest for 30 years and he was just treated like a, a carpenter because he Christ working on this table. <laughs> to get it done in time. <laughs> and that was Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was Jesus Christ, so I don't think we should try to do anything more than him. There is a strong connection between the goodness of all the things of the earth and the goodness of God. Everything that lifts the soul a little lifts the soul to God. 
as long as it is good, as long as it is beautiful, and as long as it is true, it is the goodness of God. And I believe that our wine is beautiful, good, and true. In La Barre, France, Colum Flynn, EWTN News in Depth.